Good to see everyone this morning. Our sermon this morning will be different in many ways. I simply want to talk to you as a congregation about your preacher. This will be quite difficult because it is very personal and emotional. Emotional matters that I have attempted to block for some time. So please bear with me. I feel there are some things I must say to the congregation here in Portland. Some of you have asked me some questions that I have not been able or ready to answer. I will attempt to answer those questions in this sermon. I just want to talk to you about some serious matters today. The preacher of this congregation is responsible before God to present the Word of God to you each and every week. Why is this so very important? And why is it such an awesome responsibility? The reasons are because the Word of God convicts us of our sins. Remember in Acts chapter 1, verse number 5, Jesus promised His apostles, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then in verse 8, He said to them, you shall be witnesses unto Me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the othermost parts of the earth. Then in Acts chapter 2, in verse number 1, the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that these apostles were all gathered together in one place, and suddenly there came a rushing mighty wind from heaven. It filled all the house where they were sitting they began to speak in cloven tongues, tongues of fire set upon each one of them. And Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, they spake as the Spirit gave them utterance. This baptism of the Holy Spirit endowed these men with the very Word of God. Jesus had promised them in John 14, 26, the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in My name. He's going to teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said to you. Same promise in John 16, 13. So these men were promised to receive God's very Word. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37, these men we're speaking God's Word. And the Bible says, when they heard this. What is this? The Word of God. When they heard the Word of God, Acts 2.37, they were pricked in their heart. They said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? In Acts 5.33, God's Word is presented by these men again to the Jewish authorities. And the Bible says, when they heard that, that is the Word of God. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart. And instead of asking what to do, as in 2.37, they took counsel to slay the apostles. 
in Acts 7.54, the Word of God is presented by a gospel preacher. And the Bible says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And as a result, they murdered Stephen. Acts 4.12 says the Word of God is alive. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides asunder even to the joints and the marrow and the soul and the spirit and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So your preacher must preach God's Word because that's what convicts us of our sins. He must preach God's Word because that is our great weapon against superstition and ignorance and Satan in a very ungodly world. In Acts chapter 19, verse 19 and 20, after the Word of God was preached, the Bible says, all many also of them which use curious arts brought their books together and they burned them before all men. And they counted the price of the books and it was 50,000 pieces of silver. Verse 20 says, So mightily grew the Word of God and prevailed. God's Word prevails over superstition, over denominational doctrines, over the false ideas of men. God's Word must prevail. In Ephesians 6.17, we are told as Christians to put on the armor that God gives to us. The weapon we use as Christians is found in verse 17. The sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. Your preacher must preach the Bible because that's what will save our souls. In Acts 2.41, when they heard the Bible preached, when they heard the Word of God, it says, They therefore that gladly received the Word were baptized. In Acts 2.47, it says these were praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Who was saved? Those who heard the Word of God when it was preached and accepted it and obeyed it. In Acts 13.46, Paul and Barnabas went to a distant shore to preach God's Word. And the people rejected it. And they began to blaspheme God. The Bible says Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the Word of God first be spoken to you. But seeing you have put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, we turn to the Gentiles. And what does this tell you? If they had accepted the Word, they would have had everlasting life. But they rejected it. So they set aside eternal life. In John 6.63, Jesus said the words, I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. Romans 1.16 says the Gospel is God's power to save our soul. James 1.21 says receive with meekness the implanted Word which is able to save your souls. In John chapter 12, verse 48, Jesus said, The one who rejects Me and does not receive My Word as one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. Look at John 12, 49. 
Jesus said, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. In verse 50, Jesus said, I know that His commandment is life everlasting. Your preacher must preach the Word of God because it will save our souls in heaven. Your preacher must preach the Word of God because of Acts 20 and verse 32. Paul said to the Ephesian elders, I commend you to God, to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among those that are sanctified. Don't all of us need to be stronger Christians? Don't we all need to be stronger men and women in the Lord? What's going to make us stronger? God's Word. So your preacher is responsible every time he stands in this pulpit to give us only God's Word because that's what makes us stronger people, stronger men and women, stronger families, stronger children of God. I'm sure that all of you agree with these points. Yet I want to talk to you this morning about your preacher who is responsible before God to give you this Word every week without fear and without favor. As your preacher, I am to correct you in your sins. I am to build you up by God's Word. I am to expose religious error. And it is my intention to do so with all my ability and with all the love that I have within my heart. God is the one, as your preacher, that I must give an account to for everything I say in this pulpit. I have, and I will continue to submit to our loving elders in all matters of judgment. Some have asked me a difficult question. What are your plans for your future? What are your plans for your retirement? What have you done for your retirement? Do you expect the church just to take care of you all of your life? What have you done? I am in the early stages of lung disease that is incurable. The doctors tell me and assure me that I should have many more years in my present condition. Therefore, the plans for my future I plan to preach the Word of God, which is my privilege to do for the remaining years that God gives me. I have always and will always be very concerned about my preaching. Perhaps to the extent that I have not given enough attention to my retirement. I have made some preparations, not as many as I could have made, but again this has not been my major concern. My major concern has been through the years to preach sound lessons. When the elders talked to me about coming to Portland, 
They said they wanted me to spend my time studying and preparing lessons that would help us to grow spiritually. What a blessing for me to be able to spend every day studying words of eternal life. No, I am not the person that you hired over 12 years ago. Because of this disease, there will be good days, and there will be days that are not, not so good. Fortunately, I've had many more good days than difficult days. I have not always handled this disease as I should have done. I have not always showed the faith and trust in God that I should have exhibited to my family and to you. I ask for God's forgiveness, for your forgiveness, and for my family's forgiveness who have been so helpful and so understanding especially my grandchildren. Ace D, what do you do during the week? That's a question I've been asked I'd like to attempt to answer. My number one task has been and will always be to study each God, God's Word each day so that I can be prepared to present scriptural lessons for this congregation. As I have become older, it does take longer for me to pre prepare even a single lesson. As I put on more and more years, I realize from time to time I will misplace a verb. I will miss a verse number to a passage. Hopefully, none of you are simply listening only for that. Because then the lessons will be of little benefit. I'm constantly attempting to improve my style and my diction, which I freely admit needs much improvement. But my number one goal is to present God's Word to you from a heart filled with love and compassion for you and your families. It is my duty before God to do this. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4 verse 1, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom. Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Make full proof of your ministry. Titus 2 verse 15 speaks directly to a gospel preacher. He was told by inspiration, these things speak, exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Titus chapter 2. Verse number 15. No doubt about this. You can certainly find a better or a younger and a better looking preacher. No doubt here. Because when I think about it, 
just all the preachers that are out there that are still alive are younger than I am. However, I say to you in all sincerity, you will not find one that loves you and your families and your children more than I. I love my work. It's been the dream of my life to study God's Word every day. And because of our elders here, I have that opportunity. I can study the Bible every day of my life. I want to tell you this is a wonderful place to preach. I know that I can preach anything that's found in this Bible. And I know that every one of these elders will support me. As long as it's in the Word of God, I have no fear. That's not true in many places. I wish to thank our elders for their compassion, for their understanding, for their encouragement. I deeply love each one of them and their families. They continue to encourage me to study God's Word. Thank the Lord that they know the great importance of your preacher studying God's Word. Mr. Jim Morgan drove me all the way to Arkansas. in his own pickup to preach a gospel meeting. As you might know, after we arrived, I was not able even to preach all of the meeting. So I asked Mr. Morgan on Sunday morning, Jim, would you please do the Bible class? No derogatory remarks. He simply replied, I'd be happy to. Brother Morgan taught the class, did an excellent job. It was a wonderful work to work with him and Brother Glasson, who also went with us. The only problem they kept the air conditioner so cold in Jim's pickup, I had to constantly remove the frost from my eyebrows. And we stopped so often for bathroom breaks. I thought we would never arrive there, and I could not understand that. Now that I have gotten older, I understand. One of the best times I've ever had in my life, and I'll never forget it. The deacons here have encouraged me in so many different ways. Our church secretary, Carolyn, has been so helpful, I could not do my work without her. The members have shown their love in so many ways. And on those bad days, many of you have called and offered to help me in any way that you could. On those bad days, some of you have even driven me to the doctor's office. I have received such encouraging cards from so many of you. And one of the most beautiful cards I recently received came from Jake McCoy. Many of our men, Johnny Morris, James Johnson, Jerry Moffat, have all told me that they were preached for me at a moment's notice, even as I walk down the aisle. If I'm having one of those bad days, and there may be days ahead 
that I will need to use their kindness in this fashion. I hope you will understand. God's Word must be preached without compromise. That is what I intend to do as long as God gives me the ability and the strength. With our present elders, I know that I can preach anything that comes from the Bible. How wonderful. What does the Word of God mean in your life? Is it real? Is it active? Acts 3.19, Peter said, Repent. Be converted so that your sins can be blotted out. Acts 2.38 says, Repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Have you been immersed into Christ? Do not allow anyone or anything to keep you from obeying this precious command so that God will forgive all of your sins. In Acts 8.22, a Christian sinned. What was he told to do? Merely be sorry for his sin? Repent of the wickedness of your heart that perhaps the evil of your heart may be forgiven you. If you're a Christian and you've sinned against God, don't just be sorry about it. Repent. Reform. Respond to God's Word. Won't you come to Him now as we stand and as we sing?